Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello all welcome back to our sessions on precision oncology here we will be today we will be discussing the most important models the mouse models in precision oncology in the last class we have discussed on the patient derived ex, uh, explants and we have discussed in detail the establishment of organoids and we have discussed on the single organon chips and we have discussed on the multi organon chips and we have discussed various examples pertaining to all this particular preclinical models even though you have so much of preclinical models be before the animal itself like you have the different cell lines you have the different spheroids models 2d mo models and then you have the different uh, 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 explants from the directly from the tumors then the organoids still it, you need to have an animal model to completely uh, validate the drug for its particular for its anti cancer properties so in today's class we will be discussing on mouse cancer models so one of the major hurdles for the development of treatment regimens is the challenge of uh, translating the scientific knowledge from bench side to bench side which is mainly due to the fact that many cancer models as i mentioned before they poorly replicate the patient's tumor and as a consequence even though many cancer cell lines they perform well, cancer models they perform well uh, in the in the, they fail in the cancer traits even though so for example you have several cartis or uh, several other immuno uh, chemotherapeutics which are coming up but they do not really hit uh, come as a successful drug in the clinical trials although animal cancer models have provided important insights into the basics of cancer their generation is very time consuming they require definitely a skill set and there are a bit example so for example the histopathology but they have the histological complexity and the genetic uh, the homo heterogeneity of human cancers are typically not may not be definitely be reflected in the genetically engineered mouse mouse models of cancer but they could be a, to some extent a good representation of the original tumors so this is like a, as i this we have studied the stages of different uh, stages of drug discovery from the target selection till the uh, till the can clinical candidate identification where the different pre where animals models are very much important in the different uh, preclinical objectives and and at each stages we really understand why why how can the preclinical model right from target selection till the can clinical candidate selection a mouse animal model or a preclinical model is very much understand uh, is required so it will enable to, for example here to enable identify potential combination partners for a target evaluation can i evaluate an existing for example a tki inhibitor worth with any other novel compound or a natural compound or and and here during the drug mechanistic studies if i have if i am using uh, for a novel combination <clears throat> what are the pharmacokinetic and the pharmacodynamic relationships established in this simple models and how can they really be extrapolated to the humans and and at this particular stage where to uh, to establish the efficacy in multiple models and in the and in the patient derived for the and for the patient employment so different uh, to establish a therapeutic uh, ratio or index is very very important and then for the broadening here we need expansion across multiple Indica indicators and complex models and then selection of biomarkers it's very important to identify what are exactly the biomarkers or or the clinical uh, during the or any particular pro protein such as uh, or any other rna or dna which are expressed so for this it will be enabled for the for the patient if you recollect if uh, we have been grouping the molecular uh, status of the tumors so to having a mouse model can really enable us to pro to stratify the monitor uh, to stratify the disease and monitor the disease progression this is a slide which represents the epitration rates by stage of single 
single testing for all class of compounds here and the oncology com compounds. If you really note that here, there are the, this is for the large 10 uh, pharmaceutical companies in the US and the Europe for the, from the between the periods 1990 to 2000. So if we can clearly notice that only the success rate of coming the, from the preclinical testing to having approval, it's very, very low. There's a lot of iteration that is the number of compounds entering the each tray phase is reducing. So, these data suggest that identifying the rate limiting tumorogenesis, tumor maintenance targets and the pharmacogenic uh, correlates of response during preclinical pre development for human clinical testings are, are definitely a priority. So, it is very important to have as many of the drugs to as many of the valid drugs entering for approval. So, as a result, we, there is a need to develop well-defined mouse models or animal models for oncology compound. Here, we will be discussing why are we selecting mice. Mice here, humans are about 3000 times larger than mice and, and are formed from a portion, proportionally definitely a much larger number of cells and average which is much more than 30 to 50 times of the lives. So, given the continued lifelong turnover of cells in the bodies of both mammals, this means that the humans undergo 105 times more times of cell division and, one, and several times more of mitosis. As the risk of genetic damage includes the creation of a mutant LEs that lead to cancer, it will definitely increase with respect to the increase in cell division. So, that means you humans should have a very definitely a higher chance of having more cancer than compared to the my, mice models or the higher chance of the rates of cancer incidence is very high as the risk of the genetic damage including the creation of uh, 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 mutatant alleys is also increased. But there are several epidemiological studies that reveal that the lifetime risk of development cancer here if we can see is comparable in both the species. If we can see even though the mice survival is only 2 years and humans have an 80 but the risk is almost the same in both about 30 percent of uh, laboratory mi mice models have cancer by the end of their two to three lifespan and about 30 percent of people have cancer by the end of their 70 to 80 year lifespans moreover even though the rate of the cancer increases with age in both species 30 percent of the individuals may not have cancer at the age of three years not even 30 percent it may be even a much more several of the individuals. So, a marked reduce uh, decrease in age specific cancer rates has accompanied a substantial increase in lifespan that has occurred during the past 80 million. So, this is over the process of evolution. So, so this that is why we are able to adapt mice model by virtue of having the similar percentage of cancer risk but and also mice uh, genome is highly uh, homologous to the human genome and it can imp uh, and it can stimulate a series of biological characteristics the development and metastasis of the human cancer cells in vivo has has the advantage of conveniently feeding and it also provides a good tool for cancer research for during drug discovery and verification as we will see in the coming models. Under certain conditions, the occurrence and development of animal disease are similar to that of uh, human beings and animals have similar anatomy and physiology that is uh, her and hereditary of human beings that is when some of this mammalian models. Therefore, the animal models are very well preferred to study human diseases. When coming to cancer models, the use of animal models can uh, help us understand to define the genetic, genetic basis of cancer and the role of specific genes and gene mutations in the occurrence and development and progression of cancer. So, and it can also facilitate the development of new anti-cancer or anti-cancer anti or anti-neoplastic drugs. So, with the continuous development of precision medicine and personalized medicine, there, people, there has always been a lookout for standardized and personalized tumor models that are more similar to human tumors. So, they, so based on the cancer animal models. So, you, uh, you we have the small small animal models and the large animal models. Uh, 
such as the pigs the monkeys and the and here we have the mice the rats and the zebra models and here the chemical we will continue to discuss what are the uh, characteristic of each one of these models we have the chemically induced model the tumor transplantation and the genetically engineered molecule so among the tumor transplantation we have the xenotransplantation models and the allotransplantation models such as your yeah, and here also we have the cell line derived models and the patient tumor derived models. This timeline shows the first available reports of the animal model testing which date backs to the uh, Aristotle. The first where he brought in the first end of evidence of animal use research which, uh, which over time and over time we have recognized the uh, evidence of animal and uh, animal usage in cancer drug discovery or for the for uh, envisage, envisaging the role of the cancer progression and the tumor progression. So the first uh, cancer development, the first assessment of how cancer develops, the chemical carcinogen was identified, the first carcinogen was identified and then the production of the DBA in, inbred mouse which are uh, cancer models and the cell line production the first cell line was established if we get elected we came across this milestone in our earlier class and the first uh, xenograft model and the first pdx so this xenograft is a cell line derived and there is the uh, uh, genetically engineered mouse models are also were developed so broadly all the mouse models are cell line derived transplantation models and there are the patient derived xenograft, genetically engineered mouse model and the oncogene. So now how are the production of the mouse models? So we have the syngenic tumor models which are produced by transplanting the uh, mouse tumor cell lines into an immunocompetent mouse in a short period of time. So and here this is the in genetically engineered model. The the tumor forms here the, the, from the patient. Uh, it is also similar to the, uh, the surgically resected tumor is uh, or it's taken or it is also like tumor forms as a result of the specific gen genomic modification. And then in the mice, uh, this is the, the syngenic tumor models. Here we see how this different molecule models are formed. Here it's a syngenic models where the models are produced by transform, transplanting the mouse cancer cell lines into the immunocontent animals in a short period of time. And then here in the B, in the genetically engineered tumor models, the tumor form forms a de novo as a result of specific genetic uh, modifications such as the knockouts of your uh, uh, P53 or the uh, activation of the oncogenes. And then we have the carcinogen induced models uh, where the UV light or any other chemical induced uh, carcinogen by such where the spontaneous tumors are formed and then uh, and then for the production of this patient derived xenografts which we have we will be discussing in uh, detail. So in this uh, syn syn uh, syngenic mouse model transplantation of the in vitro uh, tumor cells into the immunocompromised which will commonly utilize uh, approach to investigate the anti-tumor therapy and including even your immunotherapeutics and uh, spontaneous uh, carcinogenic or transgenic tumor cell lines can be transplanted into mouse strains such as your C57BC or BLAPC and FWB in mice. So the creation of this model takes a short period of time since transplanted subcutaneously only. So keep in mind the, the place of uh, transplant also or uh, engraftment. So the first kinetics of tumor growth in a syngenetic models often provide uh, an in uh, it may not be very much adequate enough for the uh, time to evaluate the effectiveness of a uh, immunotherapy. So also in syngenetic uh, mice it is possible to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, immunotherapeutic drug at earlier stages of the tumor de de development. In the syngenic models, some of them, the, uh, the tumor cells are injected subcutaneously as it is easier to track the tumor, tumor development by measuring the size of the tumor. In order to make a TMB maybe a, the closer to that of the human people, the tumor cells can be orthotopically transplanted into the co corresponding uh, 
organs such as the mammary pads in the mouse or the intravenous administration of leukemia leukemia cell line leukemia cell lines or intraparietic pancreatic injection of the pancreatic uh, pdax cell lines or the intracranial injection of the glioma uh, cell lines so they are all organ specific the administration routes more accurately reflect the tmv but require more complicated skill set manipulation and different definitely some equipment for both the trans plantation and monitoring of the further tumor development so the tm tme prove may prove to be an unnaturally humo homogeneous the syngenic models of tumor also lacks genetic heterogeneity which makes each tumor unique so the absence of mutational because it's by the virtue of the cell line uh, der derived in in syngenic tumors is partly due to the absence of your cancer stem cells which are not there and other populations of the progenitor cells that are present in the tmb and provide a constant source of new mutations for tumor evolution if you recollect in our last class the first slide where we have shown the different the, uh, the different cells in the tmb in addition to cells intended for translate transplantation often go through adaptations in a harsh uh, or in vitro or in vivo sessions which leads to the decrease in the heterogeneity of tumor cells the syngenic models are first very well employed to study the efficacy of the car t cell modules or the mouse derived cell derived car t cells are used mouse models allow for the toxicity of car t cells to be determined which depends both on the presence of the co stimulatory dependence and the chimeric receptors of the car t cells a syngenic model of lymphoma of a blapsi mice originally showed that the first generation car t cells without the co stimulatory domain killed the lymphoma cells but did not cause very side effects which is a breakthrough this but the second generation car t car t cells with the cd8 co stimulatory domain induced a b cell aplasia and chronic toxicity accompanied with the increase in number of the suppressor cells so but so it should be noted how the difference between the two generations of car t cells is playing a role here syngenic models are also very well employed to uh, to investigate that uh, anti uh, tumor activity of your immune checkpoint inhibitors including the anti toxic t cell lympho associated and ct la4 which we have discussed in the immune checkpoint immunotherapy slides and the anti programmed pd1 and the anti pdl1 antibodies they have been very very helpful for using the syngenic models of the uh, info for using the syngenic model of the immuno computant b6 uh, mice transplanted with the hemopoietic cell line or its analog with pdl1 deficiency you even have the mice it has been shown that the pdl1 pathway blockade contributed to the rejection of tu tumor cells in mice transplanted with the wild type eg7 cells or the pdl1 deficient eg7 cells so this is the importance of the syngenic models uh, mice models in your car t cells this slide will give the the comparative characteristics of mouse tumor models which we have discussed so here we will be discussing about your humanized mice the stem cells and the pbmc humanized cells in the last part of the uh, session today so here we can clearly see that how the heterogeneity of the tumor is very low in the syngenic mice but whereas it has been a little high in all other molecules and it is rather easy for example to set up a rapid tumor development but here it depends on the patient patient because it depends on how aggressive the patient is uh, tumor is and how uh, it's a different model. so it is a definitely a trial and tested model for each patient here so sometimes the breast it may not be really as homogeneous as it is here and here the the tumor does not have a natural micro environment but most of the tme is transplanted from the patient here the, the tumor forms from a natural micro environment here in both this uh, carcinogenic induced mouse models and the gems and the complexity of the inf inf uh, of the immune system is also discussed here it's this is based on the on the uh, graft versus host rejection because of the using the immunocompromised mice it's less it's less and then 
the price is a little bit low but whereas it's very high for all the other models as mentioned before cancer cell line in transplantations are based on the orthotopic inoculation of the culture uh, the human or mouse cancer cells in immunodeficient or the syngenic mice respectively we the patients here a derived a patient derived tumor xerograft models or gem derived models are based on the direct orthotopic implantation of human or mouse tumor fragments in immunodeficient or syngenic mice respectively here in the oncogenic mice the tumorogenesis is induced by the transgenic expression of one of the particular oncogene from a tissue specific promoter so in tumor suppressor gene knockouts here as we can clearly see the de novo tumorogenesis is induced by the uh, germline inactivation of a tumor suppressor gene here this is the conditional e and f represents the conditional genetically uh, modified uh, mouse models um, <coughs> which is induced by tissue specific cray lock sp uh, inactivation conditional uh, tsg alleles here we can see the evolution of mouse cancer models where the cancer cell transpla transplantation models are based on either the orthotopic inoculation of the cultured human or mouse cancer cells in the immunodeficient or the syngenic mouse models and here the patient derived tumor xenograft models or the J or the GEMM that is your in the session GEMM will be referred here to as genetically engineered modified mice uh, derived to are based on the direct orthotopic uh, implantation of human or mouse tumor fragments in immunogenic immunodeficient or syngenic mice respectively in this particular onco uh, oncomice de novo tumorogenesis uh, is uh, induced by the transgenic expression of an oncogene from a tissue specific promoter promoter or and in a tumor suppressor gene case a knockout mice where a de novo tumor is totally is induced here because of the absence of your tsg scene so having the advantages and different advantages we have been able to discuss about the allowed here we can be clearly seen that whether the genetic validation of the drugs is clearly possible in all this particular models and the preclinical testing can be used using in any of this all this models and however other than the allograft cell uh, in uh, immunotherapy nothing much of this particular models have been uh, so uh, have been well utilized here again grouping of my models happens to the indirect xenograft models or the direct xenograft models when the indirect cell xenograft models the cell lines which are derived from the patient tumor either they could be the original cell lines or the established pair cell line in the lab from the particular patient and then they are grouped into the orthotopic tumors or into an heterotopic tumors the direct xenograft models are directly from the patient tumor and these represent the original patient tumor heterogeneity and the tmb along with the other genotype and the phenotype characteristics of the tumor and the orthotopic uh, orthotopic direct xenograms are carried directly from the patient and without a cell line intermediary and they are subsequently in, put it in all the uh, both either in a heterotopic or orthotopic site in the immunodeficient mice so the, as we mentioned this is the model for an subcutaneous in, implantation or a heterotopic implantation and then we have called the orthotopic implantation here this in the simple way the cell cancer cell lines are inoculated sub cutaneously into the flank of the mosquito they can be either a and a syngenic or a uh, xenograft i mean either a mouse or the human cell line and the ease of the uh, ed, uh, monitoring and engrafting can be easy and the size of the tumor can be measured with the ca uh, calipers externally and they are it is a very time and cost effective and several labs are using to this till now to date to test the efficacy of the novel anti cancer compounds as mentioned before they do not have they do not have any resemblance to the original tumor whereas with an uh, orthotopic implantation meaning they must be as i mentioned the different sites before the immortalized cancer cell lines derived from the cancer patient and they are implanted in Im immunocompetent mice and then 
or in the syngenic mice so it is then they are they could be implanted in the same site as the origin of the tumor tissue so though it is good and reproducibility for target validation and for candidate selection they some of these models are representative of clinical tumor microenvironment they this can be leading have to be a there is so much of in vitro passaging and and that too in the different strains in the different mice models which is different from the human it can be lead to many of the original characteristics of the tumors also may be lost here this slide represents the timeline of the pdx models which have come into existence from from the from the first reported 1969 so although many ref mainly refer to the genetically in engineered models when come when bringing up the when bringing up with the concept because of the confusion with the pdx and the gems pdx models have gained a lot of wide acceptance and importance in right from the beginning one scientist in 2016 has applied, has uh, generated almost 100 the thousand uh, pdx models and trusted drug responses from them following a uh, clinical trial clay trail design and this is called the patient derived clinical trail pcd so this has been widely accepted from where and the wild application of your ngs sequencing to further characterize the validate the genome consistency between patients and the pdx so you have the original parental tumor from the patient and as well as the pdx and established in the mice model and as well as the drug treated pdx and that will be used as to and a comparison of the genome or the histology to pathology of this particular tumor therefore in this particular era of all the targeted therapies and the precision oncology and immunotherapy to clinical uh, uh, pdx models have really gained momentum in the preclinical drug test so they are serving as the avatars of tumors and the corresponding donors and they can guide clinical decisions by predicting if the drug molecule signal molecule is going to really help in the prognosis or the outcome of of the therapy for the patient so this there is a concept of mouse hospital which came up and it refers to the in vivo drug testing in models so as we have discussed they maintain the molecular genetic and histology heterogeneity typical of tumor origins through several passages they represent an information rich preclinical resource for analysis of the drug activities about the including the novel drug combinations and as well as predictive the biomarker discovery they for to keep in mind important of diagnostic biomarkers or the prognostic or therapeutic biomarkers can be as a, can be discovered during using this patient derived models this is a very quick advantage over other models as we can clearly see is the they preserve the genetic landscape suppose even if the mutation for example the stomach cancer the braf and the keras the morphology it still continue to maintain the genetic landscape and coming here it also maintains the uh, heterogeneity and specific uh, tra trails and as mentioned cancer immune interaction all the cells if you recollect the first slide in our last session it's all well recollect and then they produce they reproduce clinical observation for example a drug has been sensitive to one group of mice yes it could be continue to be sensitive to the same provided the same conditions are used this represents the protocol for establishment and testing of patient derived tumor models xenografts so here after taking the patient concerned during the surgical resection resection that part of the tumor which is not required for diagnosis such as for the histopathology or making a ffp block they are obtained after the consent patient's information then they have taken the non necrotic regions are taken off and the tumor bits are sectioned into approximately 3 mm square pieces and after processing and implantation subcutaneously into the anesthesia 5 week to 6 week old female athymic nude mice we will be discussing their mice models slowly during the encrafting phase tumors are allowed to establish and grow and then they are harvested upon reaching a size of around 
or based on the different cancer uh, cancer type and different can established conditions 1.5 centimeters so, and then after they are excised they are passaged to, through different pop to different passages that is the f3 to f5 and typically biological assays are performed on tumors in generally in early generations. So, these includes the drug, drug assay, efficacy assays such as you can even treat the mice with the particular drug as the same drug as given to the patient in the clinic and these were and and if the developed biomarkers achieved accurate pre prediction in the validation set of the PDX models, they might be translated into earlier early phase clinical trials as to as tools for patient selection strategies so here we can see how the biomarker suppose you have the uh, a say copy number variation or a gene expression for a resistant uh, uh, for a drug resistant variety PDX model, this particular could be main and for a sensitive it could be a gain, gain in copy number. So and then we have the integrative genomic cluster and the, the different particular. So you can clearly predict where bio, biomarker positive and they don't respond to the drug and the di uh, sorry a biomarker positive the drug is given and the biomarker negative the drug is not may not be given and thereby eliminating the patient from toxic effects of the particular cancer drug. Here we will be discussing about some of the endpoint assays such as your Q, RT-PCR, Western blotting and the RNA sequencing to a, or, and the whole exome sequencing and the drug sensitivity testing on these tumors, tumors and the immunohistochemistry analysis. And then we will also see here we will be seeing that the PDX engraftment trained how does it alter. So what is PDX engraftment? It is the ability of the tumor to establish in the mice. mice. So it could be the two they as I mentioned before the primary tumors are cut into small pieces and transplanted with maintained tissue structures. So they can be either be administered subcutaneously in an orthotopic or a heterotopic and transplantation. So, different tumor types take different duration to establish PDS ranging from 6 months to sorry ranging from several few days to 6 months. Generally, when the tumor reaches a particular size, it is usually passaged into the next generation. So, the time of the to time of PDX extab, uh, establishment gradually stabilizes at uh, with a time of say 40 to 50 days with passages. So and to avoid tumor engraftment rejection in mouse model, conventional PDX models are typically crea created using the PD immunocompromised PD mice such as your athymic nude mice, your skid mice, non-obese squid mice or the NSG mice that is your I, uh, IL2 gamma receptor uh, mice the blab CRG null and the IL2 gamma that is your your uh, BRG mice and we can clearly see differentiate how the uh, uh, Engraftment efficiencies are higher in more immunocompromised types. So, for example, the BRG mice is more, or the BRG and the BRG mice is more uh, greater than the N or NSG mice, and then compared to your NOD or the skid mice, nude mice. So, to establish the PDX models, primary and metastatic tumors are cut into the species as mentioned, and then and how is the how is the any pretreatment so we have two types of pdx clinical trial which is for the de novo de novo compounds or the where a pdx biop repository the tumor biopsy is established into different mice models and after passages the drug sensitivity is uh, is given is taken care so and here Whereas in the core clinical trial of the mouse models along with the patient the same therapeutic or a combination of a novel therapeutic is given to the patient along and alongside with the mouse model. So a typical data analysis and real time integration happens where the mouse response to the drug is also studied and that any of the particular biomarker expressions or the different uh, genes or any of the novel variants expressed is also studied. So here the drugs are optimized and improved outcomes of the clinical efforts is already studied in this particular clinical trial method.
in the new era of cancer treatment pdxs are playing a very important role by having by restricting the beneficiaries like for example eliminating people who do not respond to certain kind of drugs as seen before and they carry the tumor heterogeneity which will help for the uh, for retaining the uh, the predicting the drug response which will help for the targeted therapy and immunotherapy and novel therapeutics are all completely used in this for used to test in the pdx models and this is all the slides which we have gone in detail in the previous slides a very important development in the development of most super models is the creation of mice in the auto autochthonous tumors which develop in the specific tissue due to the incl inclusion of specific changes in the genome gems are usually produced using transgenic technologies to provide synthetic and tissue specific expression of oncogenes such as the kras and the mic in the breast and or a deletion of a cancer suppressor gene such as your p10 or your tp53 in the prostate cancers these transgenic models can be further divided into germline gems and the non germline gems germline gems have mutations that lead to the spontaneous development of malignant neoplasm so it has been shown that in the mice with the tp53 gene mutation a wide range of solid and solid and hematological malignancies develop germline gems have allowed the detailed study of the mechanisms of tumor formation and development but it is very labor labor intensive and does not allow the control of the movement of uh, of place of the tumor onset non germline gems are also very important and they on the other hand provide the tem spatio temporal control uh, control of the onset of the tumor or at the onset of the transformation so induction of somatic mutations at a selected time and in a specific tissue can be using various systems for example the tamoxifen inducible strelox crelox uh, p system in which after in, in endogenous activation of the CRE recombinase by the tamoxifen any gene flanked by the lox p recombination site is deleted so even several rna interference interference uh, mechanisms using your shrnas are used to create many non germline models so here we can clearly see the uh, the different applications of uh, the gems in both in the cancer basic research as well as translational oncology and this is very well used especially to identify your drug target validation and the tumor interventions to find the most effective treatment for cancer types we heavily rely on this particular preclinical pre research in animal models even though several success has is reported in validation of these animal models many anti cancer therapies in conventional pre models are based on the xenotransplantation of established human cancer cell line and may not be necessarily or allo uh, or allo transplantation of mouse tumor cell lines thus the overall poor clinical predictability of the conventional in vivo tumor model models required for the need of this preclinical pre gems and which have a better predictive power until fairly recently progress in this field has been really been hampered by the poor availability of pre pre model pre clinical models that closely mimic the human cancer models so gems have become here of great importance to improve our understanding and for the complex mechanism underlying the cancer biology and they are very much important in the translational oncology for having a better therapeutic therapeutics so thus the high attrition rate of clinical compounds which we have shown in the earlier slides as potential uh, cancer drugs indicates a better methods to predict the efficacy and here the gems can play a role here the poor correlation between the therapeutic activities of compounds tested in xenograft mod mouse models and and the efficacy in humans has not necessarily mean that they they may not be very well good models but that is why there has been a need for generating gems this diagram represents the comparison between xenograft versus gem 
we have discussed the xenografts in detail before slides whereas for the gem here the somatic inactivation of an oncogene uh, activation of an oncogene and or inactivation of a tumor suppressor gene will lead to the generation of tumor bearing gems and when during treatment with serial assessment which may take to 2 to 10 months the response or progression of this particular tumor or the mice can be done here this particular uh, mice are TSGs are inactivated somatically and generally through temporarily controlled and tissue, tissue express, specific expression of this particular CRV re recombinants. Animals then develop in the tissue uh, uh, tumors in the tissue of uh, or in the tissue of interest, especially in this particular case, it is the lung. So, tumor, bear, tumor bearing genetically engineering mice are then when treated with the compound are serially assessed for the response. So, this is the MRI scans as generated right, from, from of the lung from the lung cancer. So, gem show the initial development of the tumors followed by the and followed by rasp rapid response here which is and to and that means they are responding to the orally administered small small molecule kinase inhibitor. This particular slide gives the factors uh, contributing to the, uh, to the success of PDS entrapment for among the different cancer types. For example, in hepatocellular cancer uh, carcinoma, because of the lack of enca uh, encapsulation or the poor tumor differentiation and overexpression of the cancer, uh, successful stem markers, the PDX are successfully able to implant. Between the, so, uh, there is, and in, and this, the, if you can correlate the success of the PDS engraftment and the patient prognosis, they could be, this could be an inductive, uh, it could be an indic independent predictor for overall uh, survival and because it's a post-resection tumor recurrence. So, it is after the surgery, the tumors are taken. So, basically the clinical surgery, a surgeon has removed the, the tumor causing tissue. And it is like the sooner the patient, the, uh, as I mentioned that so before, that sooner the uh, uh, tumor establishes in the animal, the more uh, a aggressive it could be. So, they could be, it could be likely event that they may not likely to be efficient on, on uh, they cannot be likely to respond to the anti cancer therapy which the patient is taking. And this gives the uh, different for other tumors as well. And for example, here the PDAC also we have the 59% success rate for the for the reasons of which are not listed for even for the non lung squamous cell carcinoma was correlated with the pre of pre of pre-operative chemotherapy initiation. This slide will be talking about the five com common PDX mo models and their properties here which have been developed for various cancer over the years and have been used for tumor, tumor evaluation and the uh, drug screening. The model is reviewed worldwide and here the tumor uptake rate for the squam squamous cell lung cancer is around 24 percent and the FDA approved markers are like for the EGFR and then you have the uh, MMP7 uh, so and this uh, these markers are used for the for the diagnosis so if you re recollect our cancer detection methods yes an EGFR uh, diagnosis or the EGFNR mutation status is a definite validation before ascertaining the patient therapeutics. Then for coming with the can the gastric cancer as well, the mast and uh, the mast or the stem cell growth factor receptor uh, and the kit. So they have been approved biomarkers which are also used in diagnostic. So for example, even in the breast also there are very important like your ER and the progesterone receptor and the head too. So they are useful for the monitoring disease, treatment response and therapeutic selection. So these are also very important um, biomarkers which are used both in the in the age old histopathology as well as in the novel NGS technologies and as well as in the PDX. This slide lists the different immunodeficient mice which are well employed for the cancer mm, cancer biology. So this uh, development of immunodeficient mice occurs more, uh, occurred in during the uh, in the in the it has been studied with the four main stages. The first stage which included the nude mice that are the simply 
deficient in your T lymphocyte owing to the abnormal thymus deficient. So, however, the application of nude mice in many di diseases has been known to be limited because of the low relative degree of the uh, immunodeficiency. The second stage included mice with the skid which, ca which carries the uh, mutation at the PRKD, which, which PRKDC gene. So, skid mice are deficient in both the T and the B lymphocyte but retain the natural killer cells and show leakage. The skid mite mutation has then been introduced into a, a non-obese mice with the natural killer de uh, deficiency, natural killer cell defects to obtain the NOD or the sk NOD skid mice, the, forming the third stage of your immunodeficient mice. However, these mice exhibit a high frequency of spontaneous thymic lymphoma and short life cycles as well as partial NK cell activity. Therefore, their application as humanized animal model has been limited, uh, has been, uh, has limited activity. To improve this stage, the fourth stage which comprises of uh, the uh, immunodeficient mice called the NOD skid RG null mice was developed by the knockout of the IL-2 receptor gamma chain IL-2 RG. So, these knockout mice have a higher rate of human cell implantation without leakage or spontaneous thymomas and are currently they are being used as the golden standard for immunodeficiency mouse model. So, first we have really discussed the nude mice lack the effect, effect Fox N1 gene. Here you can clearly see how the evolution of the mice models have happened from a complete no uh, no remainable T cells till to till the residual as mentioned the nude mice are the earliest immunodeficient models and they were first reported by Flanagan in 1967 and there is a fox n1 gene which prevents the thymus development therefore leading to the mature lymphocyte t cell lymphocyte deficiency and this mutation happens in chromosome 11 and the main um, immunoglobin in this mice is igm so there are many several commonly used strains as listed here some researchers found the CB17 inbred mice, they carried a recessive um, mutation of a single gene on chromosome 16 which led to the abnormal recombination enzyme activity of the sequence encoding the mouse lymphocyte antigen receptor gene VDJ due to which the immunoglobulin T and B receptors could not be synthesized effectively. So, so, this RAG1 and the RAG2 induce VDJ rearrangements of TCR and immunoglobulin genes by producing the DNA <coughs> double stranded breaks. So, this uh, mutation obstructs the repair and the construction or recombination of the TNB <coughs> lymphocyte cell receptors and it affects the differentiation and maturation of these cells, resulting in lack of the mature TNB cells and low immunoglobin levels in the peripheral blood or in the lymphoid organs of the skid mice. So, they are highly sensitive to, radi to radiation uh, ingel mice were generated by the knockout as mentioned before. So, they are these uh, mutations lack mature TNB lymphocytes. There is a non-obese diabetics NOD mice via inbreeding and selective breeding. So, with the, with, uh, with the changes and characteristics similar to those in the human diabetes. So, introducing the skid mice into the generic, uh, genetic background of the NOD mice was hypothesized to result in their NOD skid mice. So, uh, with simultaneously defective, adaptive and both innate uh, immunity. So, successively, Successfully, researchers introduced the skid mutation into the NOD mice in 1995, in which is the genetic background of the NOD mice. So, they had a functional loss of the TNB lymphocytes as mentioned before and other immune cells as well as the day there is a defective and natural killer cell function, which resulted in higher degree of immunodeficiency uh, than in the previously noted mouse models. So, human B cell restructuring in nude mice and, uh, uh, and the skid mice uh, was poor.
So this had specific characteristics of low NK cells as mentioned, complement C5 deficiency and IL-1 uh, secretion is defective uh, and uh, these characteristics uh, uh, enable the generation and uh, survival of human cells and gra uh, grafts. So it is at a very high level, this non-obese mice uh, uh, and the skid mice were able to um, uh, accept the engraftment. So, if you recollect, go back to our session on mechanism of carcinogens, we have highlighted that many of the chemicals can induce carcinogenesis. So, tumor formation in mice can also be induced by this carcinogens. Some of your well studied carcinogens include your MCA that is methyl chloranthrene or your UV induced carcinogenesis or the <coughs> tobacco induced carcinogens for lung cancer or dextran sodium uh, uh, sulfate introduced ca colon carcinoma. So, for, for each organ differently there have been um, ca chemicals that induce carcinogens in mice. So, many carcinogens such as your uh, N methyl and nitroucer are used to create mouse, rat and other mammalian models to investigate the anti-tumor therapy for drugs. So, even though genetic instability is created by the mutagen, this allows and as such it allows for the formation of a de novo tumor formation and, and, and in this corresponding micro environment, they re, these tumors require slightly a longer time to establish. However, they have a great genome con con complexity which accurately reflects the real neogenesis of tumors in a human. Moreover, due to the greater mutational burden in the mouse model, different levels of immunogenic neoantigens are potentially generated which uh, will definitely have an effect on the immunogenicity of the tumor. However, this carcinoma-induced carcinoma models are not very much efficient for CAR T therapy because of the many number of neoantigens neo which are induced. So, can, can, carcinogen-induced mouse models have been instrument in defining or supporting the cancer immunoediting theory as, as demonstrated by the many studies. So, here this is an MCA induced carcinoma which we have said, said it is an ca cancer induced mouse model MCA induced ca carcinoma in mice. As mentioned before carcinoma induced mouse cancer models have been very instrumental in supporting the immune editing, immuno editing theory as demonstrated by this MCA induced sarcoma my, uh, in mice where they, are, they have a genetic deficiency in or mono in their monoclonal antibody targeting as we can see here. So, they have a genetic deficiency in or monoclonal antibody targeting eating as ca ca targeting of the immune components with that of the wild type control animals. So, MCA induced sarcoma uh, from immunocompetent mice can be transplanted into the second immunocompetent uh, mice, uh, second immunocompetent mice uh, by hence exhibiting a progressor tumor phenotype. By contrast, sarcoma induced in the immunodeficient mice. For example, this particular uh, <coughs> immunodeficient mice fails to grow or regresses shortly after progressing, fails to grow or regresses shortly after transplantation into the immunocompetent recipients. As such, tumors have not undergone any immunoselection owing to the absence of the B cells, T cells and their natural killer cells. These findings support the immunoediting theory. There is a need to construct humanized mice where essentially a humanized mice is one that where the human immune cells are engrafted into immuno immunodeficient mouse, mice models which include inoculation with the PBMCs as shown here or inoculation with CD34 hemopoietic stem cells as indicated here uh, uh, or a simultaneously engraftment with human fetal liver and thymic tissues. So, engraftment with the human P PBMCs via the intraperitoneal injection is very uh, common and it was first performed in 1988. 
over the time immunodeficiency humanized models were improved and an advanced nsg mice which show a high chimerism rate the development of humor and erythropoiesis and thromboiesis and the formation of the hematolymphoid compartments have become the basis for development of development of today's humanized mice models and here the nsc mice play a very high good role so even though many of the cancer uh, anti neoplastic drugs have a good therapeutic effect in the preclinical animal models they cannot play the mimic the same in the human models therefore it is necessary to establish an animal model that has can not only replicate the tumor micro environment but also have an humanized immune system please note here the humanized mice is nothing but the humanized immune system at the same time so the humanized model of the human immune system is a mouse model that reconstructs the human immune system by implanting the human hemopoietic cells <coughs> lymphocytes or tissues into the immunodeficiency mice as as we have shown here the different kind of the the pbmcs pcms and and the different are all implanted into the mice so at, at present a severity of human tumor cell lines have been sustained successfully been established in humanized mice such as the lymphomas gliomas breast cancer and the prostate cancer so according to the method of human immune system reconstruction the humanized mouse models of the immune system are divided into the three categories we have the hublt that is the human bone marrow liver and the thymus model the huhpv is the hematopoietic cells and then then you have the hu hscs that is the humanized hematopoietic stem cells and the HUPBL, which is a human humanized peripheral blood. So these are the different mice models, and the HUHSC models needs to destroy the. Its main function is to destroy the hematopoietic function of the bone marrow and mice. Here we are showing the genetic humanization of individual targets or the entire portions of the mice immune system. So genetic. Uh, in, Uh, to overcome the different considerable differences between some of the biological machineries in these mice and human knock in mice can be created by replacing a mouse immune gene in with the human equivalent moreover mouse immune editing portions can be deleted and human edit equivalents which are encoded as trans genes can be inserted into the mouse genome which results in in the recapitulation of the unique profile of the human immune portion please keep in mind we are just reca recapitulating the human uh, re uh, unique profile of the human immune system humanization of individual immune effectors for example the specificity and functionality of the specific several human effectors is very much different here as we can clearly see so and and this is is functionality the specificity and function of several human immune effectors is different from that of the rodent rodents for example nk cells as well as some sub sub subtypes of your uh, delta gamma t cells corresponding to lipid antigens they are all different so immunodeficiency mice uh, on the n n n nsg mice may be engrafted with human cell populations to study their effects on the human cancer models so this is very very important here so humanization for xenografts for example only mice bearing a gene major immunodeficiency can call tolerate a transplantation with human cells so these mice cells these mouse strains can be further optimized to support human innate immune system uh, effectors through the replacement of the endogenous uh, mouse cytokines with the human equivalents such as your interleukin 3 your gmcs that is the granulot macrophage colony stimulating factor and your thrombopoietin the immunodeficient mice may be reconstructed or reconstituted with peripheral blood pbmcs from the patients or the tumors and and that too from the same patient exactly to predict clinical response to to the novel therapeutic interventions so these are the these are the so three different processes of genetic humanization of individual targets
This is the strategy for developing immune checkpoint blockers. In the standard transplantable approach, histocompatibility cancer cell lines are injected into the immunocompetent mice. After pro after few days, after the tumors are established, the with and the tumor growth, tumor T tumor infiltrated lymphocyte populations are harvested and studied. In an innovative approach for discovering for new immunotherapy targets, T cells are usually infected with trans. Affected shRNA libraries, so that may uh, into the tumor bearing mice to identify particular shRNA li libraries that could be or to that could which when to identify particular shRNAs that enable T cell accumulation in tumors. So, this can be done by DC deep sequencing of the shRNA cassette within purified T cells collected directly from the tumor. So, this particular identification of uh, identification of immune cell death, where here it is called the ICD, which comes here identification of the ICD, I identification of the immune cell death inducers, it happens here. So, a cancer therapy can be defined as an inducer of immune, uh, immunogenic cell death if it fulfills two criteria. First, the vaccination of the tumor cells killed in vitro with the ICD inducing intervention which elicits a protective tumor uh, antigen specific immuno response in the immunocompetent mice and only mice bearing can uh, bearing a major immune deficiency can tolerate this transplantation with the human cells such as your NSG mice. So, immunodeficient mice can be a cancer therapy can be defined as an indicator of immunogenic cell death if it fulfills two criteria such as the vaccination of the humor cells killed in vitro with the ICD inducing intervention and which elicits a pro protective tumor antigen specific immune response in the immunocompetent mice in the absence of any adjuvant. It is very important there should be no adjuvant. Second, chemotherapy with this uh, ICD inducer but exert anti cancer effects that are dependent to the on the immune system, for example, effects that are suboptimal in your <coughs> which are suboptimal in the immunodeficient mice treated in the same manner as we can see in the D part here. So, the combination of the immunogenic cell death inducers and the combination of your ICBs that is your immunocom immune checkpoint blockers can have a induce a very protective or a better therapeutic response as by, as shown by the shRNA libraries which are transfected into the T cells. So, coming to the uh, end of this uh, lecture, we have seen the bedside to bedside, uh, bedside uh, translation of the ex vivo models and uh, to the end of the in vivo models, the PDX. So, where we have totally thoroughly understood the various uh, uh, concepts of the 2D cell layers, the organoids, and the organ culture, and then and definitely in the clinic after the inf informed con consent, it is definitely required to maintain them in the PTX and we have really discussed about the different advantages and disadvantages of the different models. So, in the today's session, we have checked about the complete mouse models for the cancer uh, uh, cancer research, why is it important to have the mouse models in the cancer research and the different types of mice models used and what are the different types of the uh, G gems which are produced and what are the humanite. So, we just got introduced into the different mice models in the uh, used in the cancer research thank you